Hello friends. So in the previous couple of sessions, we have been going through the topic operation of generator in parallel with the large power systems. And we uh, went through a simple explanation, right? We had gone through a simple explanation and the conclusions out of all those things were the reactive power, the reactive power supplied is controlled by the excitation, right? And the active power, active power control is done by adjusting the torque applied and that is achieved by the governor control right it is achieved by the governor control so these were the conclusions that we derived and i had also presented a simple explain a way to remember all these things using a example of a mafia so if you have not seen that video it is a previous video you can go and check it out so today uh, from today we will be looking at a little bit of a comprehensive explanation of whatever we have seen like we have not uh, done in-depth phaser analysis for those explanations. However, those explanations were sufficient to understand the concept. So today onwards, we will start with a comprehensive explanation. So today, let us take things a little bit light. Let us introduce a few terms here. So already you know what is an infinite bus, right? So you already know what is an infinite bus. An infinite bus is a collection of large number of alternators which are running in parallel. And uh, they have, they maintain the voltage and frequency are constant for an infinite bus right so this is the thing now you already have seen that i have drawn a uh, droop characteristic for a generator it looked something like this right so it is going to be something like this now an infinite bus bar how much of power you how much ever uh, power the infinite bus bar supplies or how much amount of reactive power the infinite uh, supplies it does not affect the frequency or it does not affect the terminal voltage. So what is the uh, characteristics, frequency power characteristics and the terminal voltage and reactive power characteristics of an in sync, uh, infinite bus bar. So it looks like this. So this is the frequency power characteristics. So this is the power supplied by the infinite bus bar. Okay, So it can be in kilowatts and this can be in hertz. Okay, So whatever might be the <coughs> power supplied condition so it can be <coughs> positive in the uh, positive means power supplied negative means power absorbed so whatever happens the frequency will remain constant that is the property of the infinite bus bar similarly reactive power so this is plus q which is kvar supplied okay and this is negative q kvar consumed so terminal voltage so this also will be having a straight line. So if you supply this much amount of power, frequency is same. You supply this much amount of power, frequency is same. This much amount of power, frequency is same. For this much, for example, the frequency is F1. So if you are supplying P1, F, uh, frequency will be F1. If you are supplying P2, frequency will be F1. Okay. So the frequency and voltages are constant in an infinite bus bar. So now, what is this actual parallel operation? What is this paralleling condition that we are talking about? For example, you are having an infinite bus. Okay. This infinite bus is supplying a load. Okay. You should remember that the load that we are talking might be a huge distribution system. <coughs> okay. And uh, this huge distribution system is being supplied by the infinite bus. So what you are doing by paralleling is that you are bringing one generator to the infinite bus bar like this. You are connecting it in parallel. So this also becomes part of the infinite bus, right? So once this is parallel, I've told you the V phase for both the infinite bus bar and the generator will remain as V phase and the frequency also will be constant. Now nobody can change that. Once it is in with the infinite bus bar, the generator itself cannot change the frequency or the voltage. It is fixed. So this generator has a droop curve like this, right? So this is the F electrical and let be the PG. Let me call it as PG1. So it has a droop curve, something like this. Okay. And the infinite bus bar has a droop curve. It does not have any droop. So let me call this as P infinite bus bar. It has a characteristic which looks like this, right? We have just seen it in the previous example. Okay. Now, because these frequencies are logged after synchronization, now this is no, the no load frequency. The frequency locking can be at some other frequency also. Okay, depending upon the grid. For India, it will be 50 hertz. For US, it will be 60 hertz. So it can be at some other point also. So anyway, once the frequencies are locked and the terminal voltages are locked, we can draw these two graphs 
side by side okay so let's draw these two side uh, graph side by side okay so so this is the electrical frequency and because this is a common factor in both the cases for the infinite bus bar and the generator it will have only one axis so at this right side let me take the generator conditions okay so this is the generated positive power supply and this left side it is the infinite bus p of the infinite bus positive side so anything here in the right side will be negative for the infinite bus and in anything in the left side will be negative for the generator so positive here it, this is positive for generator and this is positive for the infinite bus okay so now <coughs> what we are doing is that after synchronization after paralleling and after maybe let us assume that there is there has been some kind of a load sharing so let me see show you how that graph will look like so this is the infinite bus bar okay so this is the infinite bus and let this be the droop curve of the generator okay this is the droop curve of the generator and the infinite bus bar say in india is working at 50 hertz so this frequency will be 50 hertz and uh, <clears throat> for example the infinite bus bar has this amount of power being supplied it is supplying this amount of power so let me call it as pb1 okay and uh, this will be the power supplied by the generator let me call it as pg1 okay so the sum of pb1 and the sum of and the p uh, the sum of pb1 and pg1 will be the total load power so p load will be equal to pb1 plus pg1 okay so this is some arbitrary load condition which i have taken just to show you after some load sharing the graph will look like this okay but just after synchronization how does the graph look okay so that is what we are going to see now this graph is also called as a house diagram okay this because it looks like a house uh, when you have two generators in parallel actually not the infinite bus it will look like a house that's why it's called a house diagram there is another way to look at the house diagram there's another way of drawing the house diagram also so i'll just explain that also here sometimes what people do is that this is the say infinite bus okay so this is the f electrical sorry and this is the positive direction of infinite bus okay positive power supplied by the infinite bus in this direction so the frequency characteristic will look like this right so this is going to be the frequency characteristic for example this is the load power okay so this is the p load okay so once this p load is sub getting supplied that is fixed okay so you are going to bring another alternator to supply the same value of p load so what people do is that they draw another graph like this here uh something like this okay so they draw another graph here and this is also f electrical but now from here to here from right to left they consider it as the power supplied by the generator positive power supplied by the generator so for the infinite bus positive is from right left to right and for the generator it is from right to left and for example the generator is having a curve at this point of time like this okay so what it means is that this total value is the p load okay this total value is the p load and the <coughs> intersection point here is the point at which the frequency is same for the infinite bus and the generator right so at this point the frequency of the infinite bus and the frequency of the generator is same so we can see the power division now so if i just plot it down like this and i'll call it as o a and b okay so o a will be the contribution by the infinite bus so this will be the pb1 okay and uh, this rest of the power will be contributed by the generator pg1 so this is one way of drawing and this is another way of drawing okay so it depends upon what you are comfortable with you can use any of the drawing here so <coughs> the next thing what we have to discuss is that at the point of synchronization how does the characteristic look like okay so let us see that at this point so at the point of synchronization okay let me call it just after synchronize at synchronization how the graph looks like so i told you at synchronization the frequency of the alternator will be slightly greater than the system right so if i plot the house diagram now 
I will plot it both ways. So this is F electrical. So this is PG. I am not putting any units here because it will take a lot of time. So you have to put the units. So this is the infinite bus. Positive infinite bus. Positive G. So this is the power characteristic of the infinite bus. right? So this is the power characteristic of the infinite bus. Now <coughs> the generator is getting synchronized at a frequency little bit higher than the uh, system frequency which is the infinite bus frequency so the droop characteristic will be like this the droop characteristics on a like be like this so for example this is the power of the infinite bus this is the power of the infinite bus let me call it as pb1 so this value depends upon the load you can ask me why i didn't keep it here i could have kept it here then that would have become the load part so i have set this value myself so this is the load demand so that was being supplied by the infinite bus till now so if you see how much is contributed by the generator you can see that this much amount of power is contributed by the generator right this is pg1 okay so this much amount of power is contributed so you can see that pg1 is very very less as compared to the infinite bus right pb1 PG1 is very less as compared to the infinite bus. So at the point of synchronization, the generator delivers very less, very less or no active power. Okay, so that is one point that you have already seen. The generator delivers less or zero active power at the point of synchronization. Okay, so for example, uh, what if the synchronization was done? at a frequency less than the system frequency okay so now you have put the synchronization at this point what if the synchronization was done at some point here so let's see that also so that means this will be the characteristic of the generator okay so here the frequency of the generator was slightly higher than the frequency of the infinite bus so let me call it as the frequency of the system so here it is less than the frequency of the system so here if you see at this particular frequency you know that you have to see the values at a particular frequency only because the infinite bus is going to lock the frequencies so if i want to see how much power is getting generated by the generator at this point i have to interpolate it like this okay so this will be the power generated by the <coughs> generator so you can see that this value is negative okay so this is f less than frequency of the system fg less than frequency of the system so the power generated is actually negative so what it actually means power generated negative means the power is actually absorbed so the generator is absorbing power that means the generator acts like a generator acts like a motor or a motoring action will start occurring in the generator when the frequency at synchronization is less than the system frequency okay so that is clear from these graphs right so if you want to plot the house diagram in the other way that also we can do so this is the <coughs> load power this is constant okay so this direction is the p infinite bus and this direction will be the p of the generator okay so here this is frequency this is also frequency so the infinite bus is working at this frequency and so for example the generator is synchronized at a frequency a little bit higher so it will be here so this assume that this is the droop curve so if you want to see so this is o a b o b is the total load demand and o a will be the power of the infinite bus pb1 and ab will be the power supplied by the generator pg1 okay so <coughs> now for example you are synchronizing it at a lesser value frequency is less than the system frequency so the droop curve will approximately look like this right this droop curve is going to look like this so if i interpolate and connect it to the same frequency you can see that here the pg at this point is negative the pg at this area is positive right so pg at this area is negative so this point say let me call it as b dash uh, b b dash is actually corresponding to negative power generated okay so b b dash corresponds to negative power generated so usually 
this type of negative power generation or power getting absorbed by the system is not acceptable okay so usually there is a reverse power trip mechanism so there is a reverse power trip mechanism employed so even if you try to synchronize the generator with a frequency less than that of the system frequency the reverse power trip mechanism will activate and the generator will not be allowed to close its switch for synchronization so with this let us conclude today's discussion so we have just seen the basics of the house diagram today so actually we have not seen any load sharing we have not seen any load sharing at presently uh, that we will see in the next session so if you have liked this video please like share and subscribe the channel don't watch forget to watch the other videos also present in the same channel and today 8 a 8 pm i will be going live so you can ask your questions there also so till i see you in the next video is me varun signing off and have a great day thank you